folks. I want you to open up your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 30. Isaiah, chapter 30, my message is entitled, A Voice from Behind. A Voice from Behind, Isaiah, chapter 30, and we're going to read verses 19 through 21. Let's all stand up, please, for the reading of God's Word, and then we'll sit down afterwards. Isaiah, chapter 30, verses 19 through 21, and my sermon is A Voice from behind. Beginning with verse 19 of Isaiah chapter 30, he says, For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, well, I want to tell you, that's not the kind of bread I want to eat or beverage I want to drink. How about you? Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. In other words, when God was sending them the preachers, you know what they were doing? Get out of here. Get away from them. Put them in a corner. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine eyes shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Let's go to the throne of grace. Our Father and our God, as we stand before thee on this wonderful Sabbath day, we praise you, we magnify you, O God. We lift you up as our creator, as our redeemer. And Father, as we study the word of the Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit of the living God would open up the eyes of our understanding, grant us the understanding and the humility to apply these truths to our lives. Father, I pray you to anoint this preacher with feet of clay. <clears throat> may your hand of mercy be upon me. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen, and you may be seated. Now, beloved, God had supernaturally delivered Israel from Egypt, and he had protected them from all of her enemies in the promised land. And that promised land, remember, was the land supposedly of milk and honey. Not literally, that means it was the land of plenty for them, amen, you see, beloved, there he poured out all of his rich benefits, bounties, uh, uh, and blessings on her as they obediently and faithfully and closely walked with the Lord. But something changed. That happened no more. That's why Isaiah is writing this. He's addressing these people so he can bring them back. You see, thereby, once they had loved God, once they had served God, once they had been faithful to God, but now... They took God for granted, and they refused to listen to his voice. Now, beloved, when God speaks, his voice is heard through the word of God, and it's heard through the preachers of God. Amen? The Bible says God saves men through the foolishness of preaching. Remember, a prophet spoke to the people on behalf of God, whereas the priest spoke to God on behalf of the people. So they didn't want to listen to his prophets anymore, his preachers anymore. And they started taking God for granted. And consequently, what happened was they backslid. They didn't even know it, by the way, that they had backslidden. Like most people don't know that. You see, beloved, time and again, God had sent his prophets to them to warn them to turn. He said, you need to turn from your sins or you're going to face the punitive chastisement and judgment of God. But they didn't want to listen to that, beloved. They said, look, if you do not listen to what God says, he says, I'm telling you, you will go into Assyrian and Babylonian captivity. But they didn't listen, and ultimately, where did they go? The northern kingdom went into Assyrian captivity, and they were just about swallowed up, and were no more. And then the southern kingdom of Judah went into the Babylonian captivity in 586 B.C. And so, beloved, these people, why did they do it? How do they turn like that? You know, the persecuted church is always the strongest church. You find out who the real believers are, don't you? Well, let me tell you how it happened as you read the book. They had gotten so decadent. They had gotten so stiff-necked, so hot-hearted that they refused to hear the prophets. They did not want to listen to the preaching of the word of the Lord anymore. Because now, because they wouldn't listen, God stepped in. And as he did, their life was filled with trials and troubles and tribulations, beloved. And so ultimately, they turned their back on God. Ultimately, they began to walk away from God and do things their own way. Ultimately, they rebelled and despised the Holy One of Israel. And they would not listen, as it says here, to the word or voice of the Lord. They wouldn't do it. Isn't that like we see today? People 
pick and choose what they want to obey, what they don't want to obey. Everybody says they're a Christian. It's one hodgepodge of whatever. But God has a people on this earth, amen, in the midst of all that. But, beloved, praise the Lord, God would not let them go without a fight. I'm so thankful for that, aren't you? You see, beloved, he still spoke to them uh, uh, from behind with a still, small little voice. And he chased after them, and he divinely intervened in their life, just like he does with us. Beloved, we hear a voice from the, uh, uh, behind to turn our despair back into hope. That's why God does that. He speaks to us from behind us. You see, God speaks behind your back. Now, I don't like it when other people do it. How, do you, how about you? But when God does, listen. What was that commercial there used to be when the, the stockholders there... Um, E.F. Hutton, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody, <laughs> okay. You hear that voice from behind, what do you do? You turn your ear so you can turn and hear that, amen? And so a voice from behind, beloved, is to turn our disobedience back into obedience and our faithlessness back into faithfulness. And mercifully, we can be restored back to God because that's what God wants. That's his will for our lives. You see, this is God's divine providence, busy at work in our lives, behind the scenes to supernaturally help us and to aid and assist us, beloved. God's divine providence, we take that for granted so often. And I've taught you what it is, but God's divine providence is Him supernaturally ruling and overruling in our lives, in the everyday affairs of our lives. You may order your steps, but God many times oversteps your steps. Would you say amen out there? You see, God's providence is seeing and overseeing your life. It's allowing and appointing events to either happen or not happen. So, beloved, what am I saying to you? Why? So we can hear and obey his voice. So we can seek and follow him. So we can let him lead and govern our lives once again before, like before we did when we stopped listening and ultimately we backslid and didn't even know it. You know, when you read the book of Revelation, this it always gets me, especially when you speak to the once saved, always saved crowd. What does it mean when God said to the church at Laodicea that they were lukewarm and he'd spew them out of their mouth, he'd warm them out? Being a lukewarm Christian, beloved, is not going to get you to glory. If I can just give you the vernacular of today, God says those kind of people make me throw up. They're not hot, they're not cold. You're tempered. I'd rather have you cold, he said, than have him be lukewarm. Would you say amen out there? You see, beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying God wants to restore you. And praise the Lord, there's a voice from behind to direct us. God wants to do something. Now, beloved, I want you to listen to me. In Psalm 4610, the Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. In other words, that word still, rafa, means to relax, slow down, stop your hectic activity. Why? So you can get to know me, how I work in your life, how I lead you, how I speak to you. Slow down, be still, rafa, and know that I am God. You know, we've got the the cell phone here and the TV there and the computer over there and people over here and... And is it any wonder that people can't hear the voice of God anymore? Is it any wonder that our ancestors could hear the voice of God when at night they didn't have the TV, they started reading their Bibles and praying and listening to God? And they weren't distracted like we are today. Amen? So, beloved, there's four truths I want you to see here. Praise the Lord, there's a voice from behind to direct us. And there's a voice from behind to correct us. And there's a voice from behind to protect us. And there's a voice from behind to reconnect us. And that's what I want to speak about to you today after this little introduction. The first thing I want you to do is look at verse 21. We need a voice from behind to direct us. In verse 21, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. And not your way, he's saying, This is the way is the way, walk ye in it. What way? This, as I'm whispering in your ear, this is the way. He says, walk ye in it. 
when, uh, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Beloved, I want you to notice here God's divine intervention here in our lives when things go wrong or when we forsake the Lord for whatever reason it may be and we get off track. Now, there's some words here that I want you to understand. First of all, look at the word ears. That's the Hebrew word, ozen. It does not refer to our physical ears. It is speaking about our spiritual ears, beloved. The ears of our heart, the ears of our conscience, the ears of our soul, the ears of our spirit. That's what he's talking about. Not your audible or uh, the ears that you have on the side of your head. That's not what he's speaking about here. And God makes sure that we can inwardly and perceptively hear him supernaturally speak to us by his divine revelation, by that still, small voice of his Holy Spirit inside us. In the very depths of our innermost heart and mind, in the very depths of our innermost conscience, beloved, and our soul and spirit, as I told you, that's how God speaks to his people. Would you say amen out there? You see, beloved... By those deep and strong, powerful inner urges and desires that just kind of break for you, God break forth in you, and God drops these vignettes of truth and words into your heart and into your mind. Remember, there's a God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have to turn from the outward to the inward so we can hear God speaking to us. Would you say amen out there? By those deep and strong, powerful inner impressions and impulses and words and feelings, beloved, that floods the totality of the in, uh, inner regions of our consciousness and our awareness and our mindfulness, assuring us that it is indeed God that is speaking to us. But notice in that text also, what is he speaking to us? It says that he's speaking the word. That word is dava. And what does that mean? That means, beloved, his still small voice of counsel, his still small voice of direction and conviction inside us that whispers a message of moral and spiritual guidance and instruction to us. Sometimes his still small voice is so strong that it literally seems like it's screaming or hollering, beloved, and shouting inside and behind us. Have you ever had that? I've had impressions so strong that it's woken me up in the middle of the night. It's broken forth in the middle of my praying. And God says, Joel, this is the way. Walk ye in it. This is what I want you to do as the pastor of TCM. And God speaking so powerfully, it was almost like I could hear his voice shouting uh, in my audible ears. Now, beloved, he says, you'll hear that voice. Notice what he says, behind, a car. That means to our back and rear as if closely following and dogging after us like a dog does after a fox. Imagine walking around and somebody behind you whispering. That's what God is talking about. Like a fox running for his life and there's a dog right behind him, two steps, chasing him. That's the image that word invokes in us. So this is the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, we know, is the hound of heaven. Would you say amen out there? You see, beloved, a voice from behind. Why? Because in our impetuousness, in our impertinence and impatience, we sometimes get out in front of God. We get ahead of God's timing. We get ahead of God's plan for our lives, beloved. beloved. And now he has to speak to us and reel us back in. Now, beloved, I've told you, we don't like people speaking behind our back, and I try to make it a policy in my life never to do that. I really don't believe you could come to me, you could say to me, Pastor Joel said this behind your back. I make it a point not to do that. But God is always speaking to us, not only in the front, but behind us, because he wants us to hear what he's saying to us. Amen? You know, when I had my rock band, we used to pray a, a, be, a song, you better slow down. Baby, now you're moving way too fast. Well, God's telling us, you better slow down. You're moving way too fast. You can't hear what I'm saying to you. You're clouding over that still small voice that I'm trying to whisper to you. I, I've always told you we want somebody to send us a text. So God speaks behind your back. And in verse 21, beloved, there's another word I want you to see. It's the word saying. 
Now that word saying, Amar, beloved, before I tell you what it means, know this. By him saying that, it shows that God is speaking to you. Amen? He's saying it. That is, even though the preacher may be the one saying it, God is speaking through who? God is speaking through the preacher. He's saying, Amar. And it means that God's still small voice behind us inwardly speaks to us. He communes, he commands, and counsels us as to the, another word here, way, Derek. That's the Hebrew word, Derek. God divinely appointed road and journey for us. He speaks God's divine appointed method and manner for us as to how he wants us to do something. God speaks to us his divinely appointed path and direction to us, beloved, that he wants us to take or make in our spiritual pilgrimage, our spiritual journey here on earth. Before I became a pastor, beloved, I had a lot of different jobs. I, 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 I was restless. Vietnam had made me restless. I was an adrenaline junkie. You don't do the things that you do between the ages of 18 and 21 and not be a junkie, okay, an adrenaline junkie. But uh, the, I, I couldn't find anything to satisfy me. Uh, anytime I reached a modicum of proficiency in it, I got bored with it. And then I got in the ministry. I, I was telling my neighbor the other day, he says, well, how come you're still in the ministry? I said, there's three things that I, I'm amazed I still do. Number one, I'm still married after 51 years, or going on 51, another few days. Number two, I'm still a Christian, and number three, I still practice Kung Fu. He said, what do you think that? I said, I can't master any of them. <laughs> I try, <laughs> but I haven't been able to master any of them because the more I learn, the more I know I need to learn. How about you? Discovery, more and more, especially when you study the Word of God. Would you say amen? Beloved, hear me now. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He knows all things. He knows where we're going. He knows where we've been. He knows, beloved, where we should be and what awaits us when we get to where we think we're going, good, bad, or indifferent. That's why Christ sent the Holy Spirit. Would you say amen out there? Now get this, beloved. God primarily speaks to us inwardly by the Holy Scriptures and through His Spirit, and outwardly God speaks to us through His servants and also through many of the situations in life. That's why I've told you that your life, your job, everything that happens in your life is the laboratory where God is working out the kinks in your life so you can be a better Christian and be prepared for glory. Would you say amen out there? You know, I, 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 you folks in New Bedford got about nine, almost 10 inches of rain, right? We got seven and a half in Plymouth. Well, my backyard looked like a tsunami went through it. Branches here and there. I said, Lord, I've been busy than a paper, a one-armed paper hanger in a wind tunnel with a seven-year itch, and you dropped this on me? And God said, I'm working a few things out, Pastor. <laughs> and you know what I said? What? <laughs> but I said it better. What's that, Lord? I didn't want him to smite me. <laughs> You feel overwhelmed, but and my wife will tell you, it takes us hours and hours of walking and cutting and ricking and ricking. Blah, 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 blah. It's just unbelievable because we've got a big yard. But all that to say, beloved, what I'm saying to you is God speaks to us through situations in our life, doesn't he? So we must learn to hear. We must learn to listen to his still, small voice from behind. We must listen to it, beloved, and learn how to trust it and follow it and obey it. Would you say Amen. Why is that, preacher? Because he is our divine counselor. He is our divine teacher, our guide who indwells us. And he's always present with us, beloved. And that's why Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that we quote all the time says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Would you say amen? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart? Yes. All of it, no reservations whatsoever. You know, when I, I was thinking in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, it says, Trust thee in the Lord forever. The Lord Yehovah is everlasting strength. Trust thee in the Lord forever. And the Lord Yehovah is everlasting strength. And so, beloved, God promises a voice from behind will lead you, a voice from behind will guide you. 
That voice from behind will direct you to either stay there or get on course. And far too many Christians have gotten off course in these last days. So the first thing I wanted you to see was a voice from behind to direct us. Number two, when we get off course, we need a voice from behind to correct us. Look what he says in verse number 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, we've all had that, haven't we? Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore like you have been doing. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Beloved, God constantly and continually sends us his preachers to teach us his word, will, and ways. But often we do not listen because we have our own ideas about something. Now let me say this to you. If you are going to have, uh, you had an electrical problem in your house, would you want the guy next door who's just a hack, who plays with electricity, doing all the work, or would you want to hire a, a licensed electrician? You'd want to hire a licensed electrician or a licensed lawyer or a licensed doctor because you figure they've had the training and they must know more than me or that guy. How about with preachers? If he's worth his salt, he's spending all his time in the Word of God. And yet they didn't want to hear it. And God's prophets, God was speaking directly to his prophets at that time. You see, beloved, when we get off course, God always, often has to chastise us and discipline us. And he says here with a divine bread of adversity and the water of affliction to get us back on, on, on course in our life. So we'll stay on that narrow road to heaven. And I want to tell you, that bread of adversity is an awful bread to eat. And that, that water of affliction is a sour beverage. You don't want to have that, those problems that come in our lives like that, if we get off course, amen? You see, folks, I want you to remember the law of reciprocity, sowing and reaping, so succinctly stated in Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says this, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit so of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you'll reap if you faint not. You can get tired obeying the Lord sometimes, can't you? God said, don't get discouraged about it. Because in due season you're going to reap the harvest of what you did. Would you say amen out there? So, beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying as you sow, you reap. And that's a fact whether you like it or not. Look at your life. Find out, do you think, these, if you're not walking with the Lord, these things that are happening, these debates, arguments, confrontations, do you think that that is just an accident? Is that what you really think? Or is it God's hand trying to get your attention? You see, sometimes God has to take us out to the woodshed to painfully teach us this. Amen? You see, beloved, God says that from now on, though you're putting my teachers in a corner, you're going, so you won't have to listen to them, you won't have to see them, now you're going to see them, be they a person, a preacher, or a problem that may come in your life. You will see it, this is what God is saying to the children of Israel. There'll be no way to hide it. You're not going to say, well, that was just a coincidence that happened to me. No, you will say, this is of the Lord. Would you say amen? That still small voice inside of you will whisper. That voice from behind will say, this is of the Lord because I love you. And I'll talk more to you about that as we go along. You know, beloved, but I got to say this to you, in all due honesty, that I suspect that there comes a time in life of every Christian, as with Old Testament Israel, when we want to turn our back on our faith. There must come a time in every Christian's life, beloved, when we want to quit. We want to throw in the towel and give it all up. I know from my perspective, there's a time in my life, beloved, when I want to get out of the spiritual battle. I'm sick and tired of it and just walk away from it. I've been at the tip of the spear 43 years. And there's a lot of times I say, you know what, Lord, I'm in my dotage right now. This gets too heavy. And I won't bore you with the details of my last couple of weeks. But I understand where Old Testament Israel was coming from, and I'm sure you do too, beloved. You see, what am I saying to you? I'm saying this, that every one of us at one time or another has felt that way. Amen? You see, Israel did. 
You got saved and were happy. You got saved, you sensed God's presence in your life. You got saved, you felt like you were on top of the world, that you could now conquer any adversity, any uh, affliction that came your way because God was right there with you in your life. You said, boy, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And for a while, at least, beloved, everything went well. It always does when you first get converted to become a new Christian and you go through your honeymoon. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is so wonderful. I can't believe it. Then you got to grow up. <laughs> right? God starts working. It's like joining the military. Everything's wonderful. You get on the bus, get off, and they say, get up! And they start teaching you how to be a Marine or a soldier or a SEAL or whatever it may be. They start working in your life, and you got to learn the laws, and sometimes the hard way. <laughs> you see, beloved, you had no new, real problems when you first got saved. Uh, and you had some money in your pocket, and your bills were paid, and, you know, everything was wonderful. But after a while, everything just seemed to fall apart. After a while, things just seemed to go wrong, beloved. You suddenly lost your job or your paycheck, and then you got mad at God. You, beloved, were unexpectedly diagnosed with a serious illness and you wondered how in the world could my God allow this when I've been trying to live for him? How could he do it? You see, beloved, you get livid with God. And then you wonder, you know, I, I, I can't understand what's going on because I'm starting to have one problem after another problem in my life. So what do you do? You blame everybody else and especially God. And the devil says, if he really loved you, he wouldn't let this happen to you. All right? You see, the devil's right there. Or his minions, his demons are right there whispering that to you. He blamed God because you got off track. But, beloved, you felt like he was unfair, unjust to the, let these things happen to you and treat you like this, especially after you had been so obedient or faithful, beloved. So now you felt like God abandoned and betrayed you. And the devil makes sure that now you feel like you've lost your desire to pray and read the Bible. Remember when you had that when you first got saved? You couldn't wait to crack open the Word of God. You couldn't wait to get on your knees and go before God. Now you may dip your head and do a... A prayer on the way to work. And the devil's right there. So now you didn't feel like going to church anymore or listening to the word of God anymore. You had little interest in listening to a sermon anymore. Blah, blah, blah. That's all he says, whatever. Well, beloved, I got news for you. There's no new truth. And if someone starts preaching new truth to you, get out of that church. Peter. The apostles all said, remember, these are the words that I have spoken unto you. Remember the words I have spoken? That's past tense, aorist tense. It's mindful of me to repeat these things is what he's saying. Because you remember, from, what was my sermon's name last week? Anybody remember? <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? What was it? What was it, Derek? I knew that, honestly. But I was saying, I wanted to see if he had I didn't know what he said the first word. It was finish your course. I was speaking to Brother Dave about it at the beginning before. Finish your course. But it goes to show you how our memory slips so quickly, doesn't it? You want to know why? Because we've got a lot of things going on around us that we're involved in. That, that are necessary to do in life, amen? That we've got responsibilities. We've got duties. And Satan takes advantage of that. And then when things go wrong, beloved, we blame God. You see, now all things seem to be going wrong for you. And once you fought that good fight, beloved, but now you're tired and weary, you just want to lay down your sword. One time you used to earnestly resist the devil and temptation, but now you don't feel like doing that anymore. So what if I compromise a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here and there's God and a little bit there and a little bit here. I love you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. But you're aware. You've compromised and walked away from God. I remember there was a time when Christians had standards. Not anymore. Women work, walk around like harlots showing their cleavage. And they say, I love you, Jesus. Skirts up to here. I love you, Jesus. Tight. I love you, Jesus. A woman, the Bible says a woman should dress modestly. Did God lie to us? Did the Holy Spirit lie to us? Beloved, even the priests, they, the people, when they walked up the steps, they had to have long garments, and the people were not there able to watch to look up their garments, but not anymore. 
We've adopted the standards of the world. Well, everybody else is doing it. And you see, that's the culture. It goes to show you where we're at, doesn't it? How many of you like to watch old movies? I do. Do you notice that 90% of the women all dressed in dresses? Out in the, they get, what do they have on? In other words, they're dressing like women because there was supposed to be a distinction in the races, and they make sure that there was, because they understood some things that we don't today. Now, I don't know how I got off course on that, but that's just part of the, the, the preaching that God wants people to know. You see, beloved, people don't realize that you, we're in a real spiritual battle for our soul. And a lot of Christians do not take that seriously. They just say, well, pastor says that or whatever. But, beloved, if you look at your life, listen to me. How many of you believe that God says he's going to work in your life every day? How many believe that? How many believe that uh, Satan is a roaring lion and walketh about seeking whom he may devour? How many believe that? Are you on guard? Are you spiritually alert? Do you understand what's going on? Are you able to discern the things that are going on? Are you? Or is it just me, 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 I, I, I? This is what I want to do. I'm not happy. I'm so discontent. I'm not satisfied. If I was only married to this one or that one or love that one, well, you can't marry me. I'm already married. <laughs> wouldn't have you anyway. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to be married to me anyways. You see, beloved, they said, Lord, I faithfully try to obey you, and I faithfully try to serve you, and I live and witness for you, but now you've let all these trials and all these troubles, all these tribulations come into my life, and it's caused me so much pain and worry and stress and anxiety, and I'm so angry with you. I'm tempted to ditch the whole thing. I'm tempted to turn my back on you. I'm tempted to now go my own way and make my life much easier. Lord, I didn't have these problems when I was unsaved. Lord, I didn't have these problems when I ran with my worldly friends. Lord, I didn't have these problems when I wasn't a Christian and always trying to uh, please myself. I didn't have any of those. No, beloved, listen to me. Even a dead fish can swim downstream, but you've got to be alive and kicking to go upstream. And we are counterculture, and we're swimming upstream against this evil world system, and it's tough. It's easy to go along and get along. And that's what's happening in, the, in Christianity today. Just go along to get them. Throw in the towel. Why cause any problem? Why, why take a stand for anything? You see, beloved, a lot of people are saying, I remember the garlic and onions when I was back in Egypt. They were appetizing. I remember the succulent leeks and cucumbers that were set before me. Ah, oh, when I was back there in the world and things were so much easier. And I remember all the quail and the manna that fell from heaven. Everything made my life so much simpler then. Yeah, that's true, beloved. Yes, we're tempted to look back and uh, remember the old way, which seems so much easier, beloved. And so many people, unfortunately, when they look back, they go back. They give God verbal service, lip service. Isn't that what Israel did? Isn't this what the whole testament is about? They gave him service, but not life service. And so we ought to thank God from that voice from behind. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 14, that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It seems right unto the person who's not walking with God because he doesn't know the word of God. See, there is a way that seems right to him. Why? Because he doesn't know God's way. But he knows his way or her way. But it's not God's way. So many follow Satan, beloved, his temptations. Many end up neglecting so great a salvation. And they drift away from the faith and they turn their back on God to the peril of their soul. But thank God, thank God, thank God. That is not the end of the story. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying we can still say, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why? Because when we do end up doing this, beloved, there is still that still, small voice inside of saying, stop. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Would you say amen? That voice from behind. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Now, that's up to you. That voice says, come back, come back, come back. Don't go that way. 
Come back to me. Don't you quit. That little voice whispers, don't you give up, don't you backslide, don't you turn your back on me. I'll help you, I'll deliver you, I'll comfort you. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, so you got off track, huh? So you're going the wrong way, huh? So you would have uh, endangered your soul and gone straight to hell if I didn't start whispering to you, stop bringing those problems in your life, and start getting you tripping up over these stumbling blocks. And I did it because God loves you. Would you say amen? You're his son. You're his saint. You're his child. And he's got an eternal investment in you in the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, so God says, I had to give you these trials. Why, Lord? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get your attention. I've been trying to get your attention. Nothing else seemed to work. I had to give you this pain so you'd look up. You see, I've saved and I've sanctified you, and therefore I want you to enter into the eternal kingdom of God. It's that little voice from behind whispering these things to us. Oh, have you taken time to listen? Have you heard his voice, beloved? You know, God says, I'm looking out for your best interests. I'm looking out for, in care and concern for your welfare and your safety. I'm looking out for you, trying to give you some correction and wisdom. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 8, 34, Blessed is the man that heareth me. It's wisdom talking. Blessed is the man, wisdom says, that hears me. Do you hear wisdom? wisdom, That talking to you? Do you hear it talking to you? Wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. Not just knowledge. A lot of people have knowledge, but they don't know how to apply it right. Amen? But wisdom is the application of knowledge. The Bible says in Proverbs 1.5, A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all thy getting. Get understanding about that wisdom. Would you say amen out there? So, beloved, are you listening to that voice from behind? Are you hearing that voice from behind? Are you heeding that voice from behind? So what have we learned so far? We need a voice from behind to direct us. We need a voice from behind to correct us. Number three, beloved, we need a voice from behind to protect us. I want you to look at verses 21 and 22. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left. You shall defile also the offerings of thy graven images of silver. Now, the graven images, in other words, they would have a totem pole covered with silver. It looked expensive, looked good, but it was nothing but a graven image in God's sight. And the ornament of thy molten images of gold, or they'd cover it with gold, make it look expensive. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. I don't have to explain that to you, do I? What are you supposed to do with those idols? You cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Now, beloved, to me, verse 21 is one of the sweetest verses in all the Bible. Why? So, as we read this, we can see that this is God speaking with that little voice from behind us. (laughs) You see, beloved, what am I saying? Again, the people have turned their back on God. His voice from behind was trying to get them to turn around, to correct and protect them, but they wouldn't listen. So they had ignored his prophets, his counsel, his warnings, his chastening, beloved. They were endangering their souls. So God says, I'll tell you what, it's high time you get back on the right path so I'm going to deal with you. Why? Beloved, if a child was running across the street and there was an 18-wheeler coming, you would scream with all that you had, stop, don't go, son, come back, wouldn't you? That's what God does. That's what God does. Beloved, listen to me. Listen to me. Young people, you listen to me. You may have knowledge between your ears, but you don't have the experience of your parents. They've got more life experience than you ever do. They know how to apply that knowledge. What works, what doesn't work. So you can look it up on the internet all you want, but let me tell you something. You need to go through that crucible of experience to understand that knowledge. Would you say amen? You see, beloved... What am I saying to you? I'm saying this. In Proverbs 15, 31, God says, The ear that heareth the reproofs of life abideth among the wise. Now, beloved, notice what he says in this text. 
that he says that we'll hear that voice from the hind saying, get thee hence. When you get right with God and listen to that voice, you say to your besetting sin, get thee hence. You understand Satan and his demons are attacking you, so you say, get thee hence. Get away from me. You say to that worldliness, that compromise you may have in your life, get thee hence. You are a filthy menstrual rag to me, and God would never accept it. See, that's what he's telling the children of Israel. And these things are written for our examples. Upon whom the end of the world have come, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 and 11, doesn't it? These are written for our admonition. The Bible tells us. And so, beloved, many times we have to listen to that voice so God will protect us. And so God says, okay, I can't speak to you from behind, so I'm going to get out in front of you. And if you won't listen to me when I speak to you from the front, I'll speak to you from the side. If you won't listen from the side, I'll listen from the other side. Above you, below you, whatever it takes, I'm going to speak to you. Would you say amen? We're going to get out in front of this. Because I'm still here with you. I'm still right behind you. I'm still trying to speak to you. I'm still trying to get you to listen to this voice from behind. So pay attention, pay attention. Listen up. Tell those things that are tripping you up, that get thee hence. Solomon said this in Proverbs 16, 9. He says, a man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. In other words, let's take a good man, a righteous man. The righteous man bathes it in prayer, and he says, this is what I believe the Lord wants me to do. So he sets out, and all of a sudden, all these problems come. And he says, gee, Lord, I've been listening to you, and Without you even knowing it, God's moving you away from this guy and over this. And he's, he's directing your steps and you don't even know it. But you believe that God had led you that way. Only you didn't know it was the way that you thought he was going to lead you. <laughs> See, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen. As the heavens are above the earth, Isaiah in chapter 55 uh, says. And so God says, you won't listen to me. Okay, okay, you turn your back on me, but I won't ever give up on you. Haven't I promised you? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Listen to me, beloved. He didn't just say that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. It says, as it is written back yonder in the Old Testament, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You might forsake me, but I will never forsake you. Would you say amen? And it amazes me when people quote that. They, they, they only take the words, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. As it is written. Written where? In the Old Testament Scriptures. It just amazes me sometimes. We can't see the forest or the trees. So God says, I want you to come back to me. I want you to turn around. I want you to uh, stop running away from me. I, I want you to turn to the right or turn to the left because I don't want you to get off course. So just listen to what I'm saying to you because I'm going to protect you. I'm going to defend you. I'm going to do what it is I promised you that I was going to do in your life. Amen. God is saying, I might have to chasten you a little bit. I might have to discipline you a little bit. I might have to do these things to you a little bit. But it's because I love you. In Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says, No chastening for the present seemed joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them who are exercised thereby. So that's why God says, don't quit. Don't quit when you're being chastised. Look at it as a sign of God's love in your life. His care for your life, his care for your soul. Would you say amen? Because we need that. You see, God says, I won't let you go without a fight. I'll chase after you. I'll pursue you. I'll run after you. I'll do everything I possibly can so you'll come back, so you'll come back, so you'll come back because you listened to that voice from behind. From that voice from behind. Beloved, Did you ever hear God say, this is the way walking in it? Did you ever hear that? When you wanted to go a separate way, but there was something that was pressing you inside and saying, this is the way walking in it. Now notice when God says that, he says, this is the way, not a way, not my way, not your way, not her way, not His way, not another way, not a different way. God says, this is the only way. This is my will, my plan, my purpose for your life. This is the way. 
He uses the definite article, not the indefinite article, a, uh, as if it's a, a multiple choice. This is the way. And beloved, I can tell you this, after being a Christian the years, I've been a Christian and a minister. God's way, really, that is tough. And I'll tell you why. I want to tell you why it's tough, beloved, because it's just like in the military. No matter what branch you're in, you make it tough so you can see who will stand, who will qualify, amen, so you can teach them. What kind of a warrior would you be if you never trained, you never went through the pain, the suffering, or any of that, and then they just give you a weapon and say, go on and shoot whatever you want? Not whoever you want, <laughs> the duck. <laughs> but you see, beloved, that's why the training is so tough. But the reward is so rich. Eternal life. An immortal body, glorified body. You know, I have to laugh. I was talking to a pre-tribulation rapturist. He was a professor, in fact, uh, uh, probably about a week ago on the Internet. And I said, because uh, he believes, you know, pre-tribulation rapture, that the saint God, Christ is going to come secretly seven years before the second advent, and he's going to uh, uh, resurrect the dead. They're going to get their glorified bodies, and he's going to transform the living, and they're going to be caught up. And yet, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, I believe it's verse 8, God says when he comes to be glorified in his saints, the word comes there is parousia, <laughs> the second advent. Everybody, there's not a commentary around that will say that. I says, when does the Bible say we're going to be glorified? Everywhere the New Testament says, at the second advent, when he comes. How's he coming? Behold, I come, what? Visibly. Every eye shall see me, and they also which pierce me, and all the kindred of the earth shall will because of me. Even so, amen. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, Revelation 1.7. We're glorified at the second advent so we can withstand the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you say amen out there? You see, beloved, what am I saying to you? I'm saying a lot of people want to turn to the right and to the left and to the middle, do whatever they want to do, but it's the wrong way. It's the worst way. But God himself, praise the Lord, is there to protect us and turn us on to the right way. Amen? But we've got to listen to the voice and obey it. Lord, I know that I, I can lie, cheat, steal, and it'll be a lot easier, but, but if I do what you're want, asking me to do, it, it's going to be harder, it's going to be tougher. And God says, you're going to have some character, you're going to have some strength in you, you're going to put some steel in your spine. Isn't that what we need? Some steel in our spine? None of us are born courageous. We have to learn it through the crucibles of life. How to be. So, beloved, we need to listen to the voice from behind to be able to direct us, correct us, protect us. So let me close with this in the last three minutes. We need a voice from behind to reconnect us because we've gotten away from God. Look what he says in verse 30a and verse 31. He says, And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. And then drop right down to verse 31. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down with smoke with a rod. Beloved, doing our own things severs our communion. It severs our connection to God, and we need to be reconnected. Now, when he talks about the Assyrian here, he was really talking about Sennacherib. But Sennacherib is a type of any problem, any enemy that may come into our life. God would have saved them from any problem, any enemy. He would have saved them from the Assyrians. But they didn't want to listen to him, so he had to go to work. So God is telling us right here that he's not going to give up on us. And beloved, we've got to thank God that he never, ever will give up on us, beloved, if we'll just but listen to him and not snub him and turn back and listen to what he has to say. Amen? And you know what that takes? Humility. You've got to put aside your pride. You've got to... Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord that he may lift you up, the Bible says. In James and in Peter. You see, beloved, when you hear God's voice from behind like the Old Testament Israel did, and then you repent and turn back to God and start obeying his word once again and seeking his will once again and doing his way once again and following his road and plan for your life once again, then God makes sure they are reconnected and once again restored back to him and his good graces. Amen? You see, beloved, we hear a voice from behind us saying, when we do that, 
And I've heard this so many times. I'm so glad you're back, my child. I'm so glad you came back to me. I'm so glad you listened to my voice. Or oh, hear him say, I still love you. you know, don't let Satan tell you that I don't love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't have gone through what I went through with you or done what I had to do to bring you back to me. Amen. We hear a voice from behind saying to us, oh, I'm so glad that you listened to me. And you got back on track. You got back on that narrow road. I know it's tough, but it will be worth it all when you see your Lord Jesus Christ coming. Amen. I'm talking to someone today, I'm sure, whether by the TV when this goes on or right here. I'm talking to someone. You've sinned. You got off track. I'm talking to someone may have been backslidden. They didn't want to admit it because they still believe in Jesus. But their life does not back up what they're professing. I'm talking to someone who's grown tired and weary in the spiritual battle. And consequently, you turned your back on God and started doing just what you wanted to do. Beloved, let me tell you something. You're not saved because you come to church on Sabbath. You see you're saved, and so you do come to church on Sabbath. <laughs> so you can hear the word of the Lord. Amen? But don't think that this is a, because you come to church on Sabbath that everything makes you right with God. No. You've got to do that during the course of the week. Amen? In your everyday life. But hear me now, beloved, because I don't want you to leave here with any bad news. I want you to know that God has never turned his back on you. But shh. Be quiet. Be still. Shh. Listen. What are you saying, Pastor? Do you hear a voice from behind calling you to come back to him? Listen up. It's soft, it's whispering. But you hear that voice from behind saying, I want you to repent. I want you to get right with me. Do you hear the voice from behind you saying, don't go this way. Turn from your right hand. Don't turn from your left hand. I've set you on a course, and that should be like a compass, like a flint, like Jesus, and go to your eternal destination. Do you hear that voice? You say, well, preacher, I'm starting to hear it. Well, beloved, that voice from behind is God Almighty himself. He is a voice from behind. Let's go to the throne of grace.